Welcome back to the channel guys and girls. Today we're in southern Maine and we're fishing for sea run brown trout and brook trout. And I did this last year and it was super, super fun. And this year I'm going to like challenge myself a little bit. So today we're going to be swinging streamers. And it is not the, it's not the most productive way to catch fish, but it is the most violent takes that you can ever imagine. Like literally rip the rod out of your hand. When they take it, they actually mean it. Top water blow ups and everything like that. So these are two flies that I'll be using today or I've already actually used today. This is kind of an intro or outro. Uh, this one's actually falling apart because it's, it's been hammered so many times. And this one as well, just white, white style woolly bugger. Some have cone heads, some don't. Uh, the fish were actually destroying it today. So make sure you watch and enjoy. Um, swinging streamers is one of like the coolest things you can do. Um, it's one of like the original ways to fly fish and the takes are violent. So uh, definitely challenging, but we did catch some fish. Watch and enjoy. Let's go get them. Uh, like always, I'm using my uh, four weight fly rod, 5X Tippet, uh, Rio Perception fly line, which I have to stretch. I gotta get, so I gotta need help from somebody to help stretch it. And uh, we're at dead low tide here. So I gotta watch, watch myself on the tide. I got Rio's polarized glasses on. That's why I feel confident in walking in here. And there's nothing better than a white streamer for a search pattern, really. Just, you can see it, fish can see it. Pretty much, like all sorts of bait is either, you know, a silver color or a white colored. Sometimes they'll have a bluish tinge to them. So there's also browns, sea run browns in here. Sea run brook trout and stock brook trout, stock browns. But it is a uh, interesting fishery. They call them salters, which you know brook trout used to be used to run into the ocean back in the day. And since we've dammed up every pretty much every water body that enters the ocean, doesn't really do that anymore. Oh. Just had a big swirl come at it. That was a big swirl. So they're right in front of me, it looks like. Stand off to the side here. Oh, just broke me off, guys. All right, I just put on a new leader and rebuilt my leader. This is a homemade leader. And I'm trying a different fly first. Just gonna let that sit down there for a second. And I got broken off hard. I mean, hard. I don't know if they'll hit the olive, but we're gonna try anyways. That might've been a fish. I think it's the bottom. I'm sitting off this like little Slow pull edge here. A couple more casts of the olive and then I'll switch over back to white. So I only have a couple white flies. I got to tie a bunch. This is like an emerald shiner pattern. Should work. It's white. It's kind of woolly bugger-esque. Swing that into that current seam down there. Throw a couple stack bends down. Get it down deeper. Oh. He just missed it. He's right in front of me. I'm going to step back a couple of steps. I think I'm closer to the fish than I think. So far the takes have been absolutely violent, which means they're hungry. Let's sneak over and do a downstream or an upstream presentation. But while we're doing that, let's uh, just hang that streamer in there. Can't fish if the, can't catch fish if the hook's out of the water. Ooh, just got Smoked again, guys. Oh my goodness. Come on, hit it. That is violent. That is crazy. Makes me want to try like a grasshopper or something. This is, these guys are biting aggressively. 
Let's try down a little bit further on the end of that seam there. So I can see my fly all the way down there, even with a I don't know, nine, 10 foot leader. I'm sure if I dead drifted this, they'd be all over it. Let's see if I can dead drift it through there. See if I can pick one up on the drift. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to head all the way over here. This might be a swinging streamer for massive main brook trout. Who knows? Oh, that was a freaking fish again. Oh, he's right there. There we go. Fish on, guys. Fish on. Violent take. Absolutely violent take. That looks like a brown to me. It is a brown. That's probably who broke me off earlier. So it's not going to be a fun fight. Some sea rum browns, guys. But look at they got the bluish hues and stuff in them. Photo of this first one here. Main brown trout. Sea runners. That was awesome. That's what I wanted. That is definitely what I wanted right there. There is more in here. And I'm sure if I switch over to a nymph, they would slay it. But let's try with the white woolly bugger here for a little bit longer, or white zonker. Which now I'm going to tie more of. I got a couple of these. The fish only hit it three times before I actually got him, or he got, he got my fly. And these aren't very deep griffles, otherwise I'd have like a poly leader on. Well, we know this fly works. So let's change it for one of the flies I bought earlier that worked. All right, we'll change it to the woolly bugger style, which I normally wouldn't use unweighted, but that's what I got right now. And that's what multiple fish have floored already today. Let's try a long cast and swing it all the way to the bottom of the pool. And with this presentation, I want to let the fish kind of set the hook itself. And if it's, if it's real violent, they'll just set the hook. If it's not, I can strip set basically. But what I want to do is I want to fan cast in front of me. What I want to do is I want to face downstream and I want to cast basically a 45, very close to me, like super close. Like just so the leader's out of the rod, because you never know if this fish right in front of you or not. And you want to, you, you can cast in multiple current seams if you can. Since this is a, a streamer pattern, it can act, you know, unnatural, like not drifting. Then you want to cast a little bit further and let it swing. And you want to watch it the whole time and follow the line with your rod tip. And the, uh, the original way is to not touch, not pump the rod, not strip at all. But we're fly fishing here, not going for steelhead, so. And then you can keep doing that and make longer and longer casts. And the goal is to never show your leader to the fish. So you want to fan cast, fan cast, fan cast, out, 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 and get that drift all the way down there. And I have a little bit of dead current right there in front of me. I hope you guys can see that. But there's definitely fish in front of me. And I might, like, if they're, you know, being really finicky, I might switch over to nymphing. We'll see. You can also change your angle a little bit so your line gets swept a little bit more. And you can vary your retrieve fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, inch it. I like to strip fast because when you do that and a fish bites, you're automatically strip setting the hook, basically. Also cast out there and let it sink for a little bit. This is unweighted, like I said. And then you can strip it back slow so it stays on the bottom. I really haven't moved that much. I don't know if I can uh, stand right here without scaring any fish. I might be able to walk down on that side, I'm not sure. 
I might be able to get across and go down to that other shore. I can pump the rod, I can do lots of stuff. All of it's not unnatural. For a shiner to, you know, or shad or whatever runs up here, it's the salt water, so it can be really anything. Aha, uh -huh, there's a bunch of bait fish right there. Like there's a spot to get down over here. Oh, a little goat path. It's a nice looking uh, lie over here. There's a tree down. Some riffles down here that look pretty promising. Hit this riffle down here and see if there's any fish. If there's not, I'll hike my way back upstream. Not seeing any fish, doesn't mean they're not there. Oh, that was a fish that just came screaming after this, guys. So fish just came screaming after that, probably saw me as I was pulling the fly out of the water. Big fish, big fish, big brown, big brown. Hit it on the swing, guys. Oh, he's not humongous, they just fight really, really hard. I'm trying to keep him up here. Look at the pretty colors, though. Beefy fish. For sure. Let's see if there's another feisty one in there. So that one bit pretty hard. On the swing, of course. Yeah, like I said, I saw all those bait fish down there earlier. Swinging streamers for sea rum brown trout. Ooh, big blow up, guys. Big, big chase. That was exciting. These fish are crazy. Come on, I know you're in there. You're still hungry because you didn't eat it. I know these big ones are in here, man. Maybe I need a bigger fly. All right, I think I've disturbed this pool enough. Glad I came down here, though. All right, last cast down there, and we'll hoof it on up. Try back at that original spot, and then I have another spot that I want to go check out. You know there's plenty of fish in this pool. I gotta catch at least one more somehow. All right, let's try a different fly. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this little uh, bait fish pattern that I use. It's basically the, uh, a micro marabou streamer, but it's got a tungsten cone head on it, and this is what I use for a sea rum round trout. Maybe something a little bit smaller stripped to be uh, a little bit better, I'm not sure. Yep, that was it, swinging it. Swinging it right in there. Oh no, oh no. That was not good. Let's see if I can get him up, up here a little bit more. Put the pressure right on him. Another absolute beauty. He inhaled that. What a pretty fish. What a pretty fish. There he goes. 
sometimes guys that's literally all it takes is just to like downsize your pattern just a little bit it's probably a size I have no idea I'll have to go back and get you guys the size I'll put it up on the screen right here but I was doing the same thing I was teaching you guys before basically uh, cast out there 45 you can do a stack men down if you think it's not getting deep enough. And then you just whaled it. No need to set the hook. And it's one of the most violent takes that you can get while fly fishing. I mean, it just like, I've had the rod almost ripped out of my hand sometimes. But this is the fly, just a little marabou uh, streamer. Green and white. And the size of the bait fish I've been seeing swim around are like probably inch, inch and a quarter. And so I basically just effectively fished the whole riffle right there into this pool. And then I can vary my retrieve on the way back. Do whatever I want. Pause strip. Let it drift back. Make it seem like it's wounded. Cannot see the bottom of the stream here, which is making me a little nervous. But something big broke me off over there and I really wanted to catch it. Unlikely that it'll bite it again, but. All right, let's uh, go to a different spot. Thank you very much for watching guys and girls. Uh, it was an awesome blast of today. Multiple blow ups, only landed those three brown trout, but these sea run brown trout, they fight harder than any other like stocked little fish that have been put in there. One, they have to fight the stream, two, they have to fight the tide, and three, everything in the ocean is probably trying to eat them. So they fight a lot harder. No brookies today, unfortunately, but that's okay. The, the takes were absolutely violent. I had that one that broke off immediately and I had a couple of takes that like literally almost took the rod out of my hand. So that's what you get for swinging streamers. I had the wrong size tip it on before. You really shouldn't swing with 5X. Uh, because the, the takes are just so violent, they just destroy it. Thanks for watching.